I'm delighted to be here at the Lowy Institute with our Distinguished International Fellow, Kurt Campbell. There are so many aspects of Kurt's career um, that one can explore, and what I thought we'd talk about today briefly is Burma, because Kurt's played a very important role in the normalisation of US ties with Burma, and indeed Burma's emergence, uh, and continuing emergence as a more and more democratic country. Can I ask you first, um, Kurt, about Aung San Suu Kyi? Uh, Dorsu is visiting the Institute um, in a couple of days. I've only met her once, very briefly. You know her extremely well. What is she like? First of all, I'm thrilled that she's coming to the Institute, and I think it'll be a real treat for uh, both your team and the people that will have the chance to interact with her. Look, I, I've met her the first time when she was still under house arrest. We had a, uh, a meeting of exactly three hours that the military leadership... This was in Rangoon. That's right. Yep. Um, and I found her um, to be among the most interesting people I've ever, ever interacted with. I think that's probably obvious that, you know, her dynamism. But what was interesting about her was, you know, much like um, a diamond that you would rotate in the light, um, she has several facets of her personality. Um, so at one moment, uh, you can be talking about things and you're struck by her, um, uh, her sensitivity, her vulnerability. Uh, her love of beauty and art and music, and uh, uh, you find yourself very uh, much wanting almost to protect her. But then at the next moment, she can sort of turn in the light, and you are struck by a deep and profound sense of self-determination, um, determination, uh, and commitment. Mm -hmm. that is unyielding, mm -hmm. um, and it is the. She's as tough as a diamond, isn't she? Yeah. And she had to be, mm. and has to be. Mm. And she's made very clear that she wants to make the transition, Michael, from being a global icon mm. to a political figure. Mm. And she knows what's involved in that and mm. what it will take. Mm. Um, and it's very impressive to see the, the intermingling qualities of her personality. And will she have that opportunity? If you're a betting man, do you think that the changes in the Constitution that are necessary to allow her to be elected as president in 2015 will take place? If I were, I would say yes. Mm. I, I, think, I think odds are that given her still very substantial levels of support inside the country, um, her ability to work with many of the former generals, and you, and you can't believe it until you see it, mm. she has um, managed uh, to work effectively and bury the hatchet with many of the men mm. who for decades treated her in, um, and uh, her party and others in really abysmal ways. She's mm. managed to, for the good of the nation mm. to find mm. a common way forward. Mm. And so I think there will be an effort to um, allow her to participate in um, the coming elections. And I think if not... I think there would be um, an outcry globally, mm. and I think it would impede the process of reform inside the country. As you mentioned the generals, let me ask you a question that I asked everybody when I was in Burma. Why has the regime taken these steps? Obviously there are lots of different reasons, but what is the most important reason in yeah. your mind as to why they've taken these steps? Thank you. It's a great question, Michael, and it really... Uh, interestingly, um, takes us back to the first meeting mm. with Aung San Suu Kyi. Mm. She's a person who's extremely well prepared. And so when I sat down at the This is the meeting in 2009. Yeah. You're the most senior U.S. diplomat to meet, to visit the country, I yeah. think, in 14 years. That's right. Yep. Sit down with her. Uh, she had clearly prepared for that meeting, and she said, look, I want to spend 30 or 45 minutes discussing why has the government decided mm. to do this now. Mm. And we went through the various reasons. Uh, my own personal sense is that there are the obvious. Uh, this is a proud country, a country that has a deep sense of national destiny, mm -hmm. despite its ethnic challenges. I think it does not want to feel as if it's dominated mm -hmm. by any outside country. Mm -hmm. And so in that respect, I think sought uh, and still seeks to create more options and diversity of engagement. That would be number one. I think it is also the case that um, these are a proud people that were growing tired of being treated poorly in international settings, mm -hmm. constantly feeling like they were, as we say in America, in the skunk at the party. Mm. 
But I think it's a last matter that, that cannot be underestimated. We, we talk a lot about the role of Aung San Suu Kyi, and I think it's, it's central and essential. But the role of the president, um, uh, a modest, calm, behind-the-scenes man, cannot be underestimated, Michael. In the previous regime, he was the man as prime minister that was sent out to uh, international meetings and to travel regularly. And as a consequence, he got to see firsthand in between, you know, pretty unsatisfactory meetings uh, for various organizations as he walked cities and mm. went to various um, places, how far mm. Mur Burma, Myanmar had mm. fallen behind. Mm. And I think uh, he, more than anyone else, recognized the steps that would be needed mm. to turn uh, uh, Burma, Myanmar, mm. into a 21st century society. And that leads to my final question. Um, Burma is a really important country. It's a large country. It's strategically wedged between China and India. Uh, the United States has a very important role in it. If you were to look ahead 10 years, what kind of uh, foreign policy would you see Burma um, running? What sort of role should it have in Asia and in the world? Well, look. Uh, you know this, Michael, but 50 years ago it was one of the dominant states in Asia, breadbasket of Southeast Asia. Um, if you read Bob Kaplan's most recent book, it articulates very clearly that this is the prime real estate of the 21st century, wedged between India, China, and a rising Southeast Asia, and with Australia in the not-too-distant uh, South. I personally believe that the choices made over the course of the next several years will be defining in the kind of country that uh, Myanmar will become. Uh, I think very few countries on the planet has its endowment of natural resources. Um, it has a, a remarkable uh, determination to succeed. I think the key, however, is not the question about the surrounding states, or even the nature of uh, economic investment, although that's vital. Uh, outside external investment and support from Australia, from Japan, from, us, from uh, uh, South Korea, from the United States is an essential uh, ingredient in reform going forward. I think the real issue is whether uh, this country, with its fractious ethnic minorities, will find a way to uh, manage effectively in some consortium that gives uh, uh, ethnic groups uh, a sense uh, that they are participating in the destiny of the country. That has always been the problem, mm. uh, and it predates uh, even uh, uh, the period of independence in mm. the 1940s. Mm. So if we can get through that, uh, and manage that more effectively, I think uh, we could see a country that comes to play a defining role uh, in the Asia of the 21st century. Mm. And if Aung San Suu Kyi were elected president, um, you can imagine the, the response if you have someone who's a global human rights symbol, who's also the president of a country, the enormous goodwill that will flood towards that country over the next uh, decade would be incredible to watch. Thank you, Kurt Campbell, for a terrific primer on Burma and on Aung San Suu Kyi. Thank you. Thank you. Terrific.